Hello and welcome to this little video where we're going to be trying to predict some of the questions that are going to come up on the Edexcel GCSE Maths Paper 2 2019 calculator paper. Now we've already had the non-calculator paper which was yesterday, Tuesday the 21st, and from that we were able to collect some information about questions that had already come up on that paper and get a little bit of a better idea about possible questions that could come up on the remaining two calculator papers, paper 2 and paper 3. So what I've got here is my first draft of possible questions that I think could still be lurking out there and could potentially be on paper 2 and 3. So in my first draft here I have 14 topics or potential questions that I think you should look at in preparation for the calculator paper 2. Now the one thing I should say at the start of this video is, is that in understanding how Edexcel, even AQA and OCR are putting their papers together, we have to really look at how the syllabus was reformed in around 2015 in preparation for the first candidates who sat the exam in 2017. Two things really changed. One, whereas before algebra was something that was occasionally mixed with other topics such as angles. Traditionally algebra has always been mixed with angles. From this we can build an equation and we can solve for y. And also another one that uh, for many years that they've used is area. Here they're asking for the area of the shape and using algebra we can build some equations, calculate the value of x and then use that to find the area and the perimeter. With the new exam that came in in 2017 we saw that algebra was actually being mixed with a lot of topics. In fact there wasn't really a topic on the syllabus that algebra couldn't somehow infiltrate. And I think that's really come out of uh, an overreaction, you could say, to a complaint in the past from students that, well, what is the point of algebra? And how do I, you know, how am I going to need this in the real world? Well, in creating this, or reforming the syllabus, they've gone a little bit over the top in terms of trying to um, push the point that algebra relates to everything. And so nearly every other topic on the um, syllabus is potentially subject to algebra infiltrating into it. We've seen that most recently with probability where we've been presented with problems uh, that we have to build fractions and those fractions involve um, unknown terms and then we have to solve um, for those terms in order to answer the question about the probability. But it's not really limited to probability. We have a look at this question here which is a compound interest question. Here we can see algebra has infiltrated it in terms of an unknown rate. Normally we're given the rate here yes, suddenly now we've got unknown terms, it's like a reverse question. But the point is that algebra has infiltrated this question. Again here in the 2018 paper 3 we have what ostensibly looks like an nth term uh, sequence question but then soon turns out to be, if you look at these two statements, a hidden simultaneous equation which of course comes under the umbrella of algebra. The second thing that um, we've started to see more and more is the mixing of topics. So you could think in a, if you want to use an analogy, for many years um, uh, mass exam papers have been a little bit like solo performances, so each question is just about a specific topic. And what we've had in recent years is not just with algebra but with other topics, mixing the two topics to form like a duet. And it's this mixing of topics that has presented itself as quite a challenge for students. If we look at this question 21 here of the 2018 GCSE Mass um, Paper 2, we see that it looks like a question about density or compound measures, and then suddenly they bring in the notion of limits. So they're combining limits with compound measures, and then throwing in at the end a suitable degree of accuracy request just to finish it off. So it's this combination of topics that you also have to watch out for. So having said that, if we just have a quick look through our list here, we've got standard form, uh, because you're going to be on a calculator paper, this will really just require you to understand how to use the little times 10 to the power of button at the bottom of the calculator. I will uh, follow this up with a more detailed video where I'll do some actual questions for these uh, predicted topics. Linear simultaneous equations, well we talked about that, that could just come up as a straightforward uh, question or they could wrap it up as a problem and then and even link it to another topic like nth term. Compound interest, yes, it, ooh, compound, sorry about that. Compound interest, 
it could just be that they want you to find out the interest or like we saw maybe they'll reverse it add some algebra in so you could be finding the rate or you could be working back to the principal um, so a reversal, a reversal or involving algebra would make that more difficult reverse percentage standard question nth term again could be mixed with algebra trigonometry Sokotoa Standard question is just going to look like this with one triangle, but watch out for the more difficult ones that maybe appear later in the paper where they attach a couple of triangles together or even have a quadrilateral on the side. Often when they use two triangles, you'll be working from one triangle into the other triangle. It makes it a little bit more difficult, you get a few more marks. Reoccurring decimal to fraction, it is a standard technique. If you um, have learned that technique, you have a good chance of getting this right. If you just try and wing it or do it intuitively, it's going to be very difficult. Especially if they give you one like this, 3.125, that recurring just on the 2 and the 5. But if you can learn the technique, then yes, you have a good chance of getting those 2 to 3 marks. Change in the subject, it's just algebra, rearranging, probably involve factorization if you're doing the higher tier paper. They often do. Quadratic formula, yes, I haven't written the square root sign there and the 2a on the bottom, but I think hopefully you get the idea. Square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Obviously you have your calculator, but quite often they'll make you use that um, formula. So you do write out all your workings. That's the only way you can get all the method marks. And they'll probably ask to a certain degree of accuracy. Histograms. Now this is a straightforward histogram where they give you the um, uh, the frequency density axes calibrated. A more difficult one is where you have to calibrate it yourself using some information from the table. One thing you have to remember about frequency density is frequency density equals frequency divided by class width. This will often be required to calibrate your axes and sometimes even to work out if you get it, if you got a table here and your frequencies they're all given to work out your frequency densities. Circle theorem. A number of rules that you have to know, around about six to seven rules, and here they often ask show. So you've really got to show the steps you took for three marks to get to that point. So it requires good concrete logical argument. Uh, you have to remember also that if you're talking about an angle, you must use the three letter system to describe it. So if I want to talk about this angle in here, don't just call it angle D, call it angle C to D to O and put a little hat there. Or you could write it at the front, C, D, O. So if I walk from C to D and then to O, boom, there's the angle. Try and label your angles in terms of three letters and an angle sign either there or at the front. Venn diagram, it's a very trendy popular question at the moment. It's come back onto the syllabus after being off for many years. Um, as far as we know, it didn't come up on paper one, so look out for that, paper two maybe paper three. And vectors, our old friend vectors. You could get an easy question on vectors which is just asking you to describe the vector from one point to another or one point to another to another. And then you could get other more difficult ones where we're using ratios or possibly where we are proving that two lines are parallel to each other or collinear. So I hope that's been of some help and look out for the follow-up video which will detail some actual worked examples of the mixing of topics that I'm talking about. Watching and I hope you found this video useful. For more videos like this, please be sure to subscribe to our channel in the link to the right. Um, if you are looking for some one-to-one -one help, check out the link in the description below where you can have test lessons with either myself or another member of our AP team. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching.